All right, I'm back. And back. Welcome, welcome, everyone joining. Welcome to Winning with Customer Service at this lunchtime. All right, uh, I have my guest back. Uh, we had the network challenge, I think it was. Joining again, it's um, Winning with Customer Service, our usual lunchtime conversation where we talk okay. about how we win with customer service. Welcome, Timmy. Hi. Good afternoon. Good How are you afternoon. Doing today? I'm awesome. And you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And uh, apologies for the network challenges we had um, a little while ago. It's always Thank like you. that. Yeah. Uh, but we're here. Yeah, we're we here. are now. All okay. right. So, Today, we said we're going to be talking about winning with customer service, yeah. and yeah. the topic we'll be looking at today is how three ways through which businesses can improve their customer service, and um, you are going to be sharing with us, and I'll, we'll okay. be chatting along right. on how we can improve our customer service. But before we start, you know, deep dive into the conversation fully, um, okay. I'd like for you to introduce, give us a short introduction about yourself so that my guests can get to know you. Everyone watching here and those okay. that will be listening to this conversation after now will get to know who Tim is. Timmy Topper. Okay, thank you so much. Again, thank you for having me. It's, it's a great pleasure. Um, my name is Timmy Topper Bami Dili T. I'm a certified customer experience expert and I'm also a customer service trainer. Uh, and what you, this, the theme for this live is actually what I do. As I, I call it my mission, my passion, my profession, my assignment. In fact, in ministry, I, I simplify customer experience for businesses so that they can apply five-star customer experience and use it to win customers who would then help them to grow their business. So my focus is for us to go from service to building long-term relationships with our customers, and then they help us to build sustainable businesses. It's very important for Africa and for Nigeria especially that we don't do big business that is here for a month or here for a year, and tomorrow you are wondering, ah, there used to be this woman in our estate. Where is she today? Most of the times, aside from um, maybe operational challenges or... Um, economy situation of the country, most of the time, it's the issue of customer experience. So what I do is to help businesses understand how to use customer service as a strategy to grow their business. And that's what I'm going to be doing here today. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Good to know um, this mm -hmm. background. But let me ask, okay. did you find customer service or did customer <laughs> service find you? I think I would say both. I found customer service and customer service family. So uh, as a child, I, I, I grew up with a mother who, I, I, I love to say she has a doctorate degree in customer service, even though she does not have an MBA or any business education, so to mm. say. Of course, she's literate, but not a formal business education. But as mm. a child, I, um, she does business, and at the same time, she has a nine-to-five job. And we had to move cities, but we would move from more cities, uh, from one city rather. And then I would still have to go and take stuff to customers from the previous city mm. that will stick to us if there is no person in their city in their who city still does that can what, do what she, she does. does. And from there, I started to wonder, what is it? What are you giving these people? Is it only you that sells shoes and bags in this, mm. in this city? What, what's there? And so I think that was when customer service found me. And then when I later started my own nine to five career, I found my way into customer service. And it just seemed natural, so to say, to just settle into, not settle actually, to, to go for that. And then I decided to take it professional. So I signed up from my um, nine to five to do business. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So we, we could say that customer service is natural to it's you. It's natural. I think we can say that. <laughs> Yeah, because what, what we see around mostly is that people mm. get thrown into customer service roles, not because they like it, not because it's okay. who they are, but because um, they, they need a job and the job says you are in customer service role. Mm. And that's, mm. that could be mm. maybe mm. why we have um, bad customer service delivery across mm. businesses. Actually, I'm 
I'm going to say you are peeping into my notebook with what you just said, right? Like, and I'm going to have to stop you there because if you keep going, you're, you're going to spill all of the points that I was going to say. So all right, so I let me let me let you go. Okay. Let me let you go uh, and okay. go ahead and share with us three ways through which, um, mm -hmm. in this lunch time, any business owner watching now, three ways through which they can improve their customer service in their business okay. and make money. I have my bio, my pen. I'm writing. Oh, go ahead. Awesome. So, you too, right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, like I, like I was um, trying to say with what you said the other time. So, I, I think it's not wrong for you to come into customer service. Maybe um, a, a job at, your job at some point requires you to have some level of customer service skills and pick those up. And maybe later on, you, you fall in love with it and you think, okay, let me go professional with this. I think it's not wrong. But the error I see here, and which is going to form my number one point for the step that we need to take as business owner to improve our customer service, especially if you are doing business in Nigeria, is the mindset. A lot of times um, when you have a customer service representative, the only motivation or the, the reason why they are in that job is money. And it's not wrong. We all are looking for money. We want some, some level of financial stability and it's not so wrong. But customer service is a profession. I love to say it is not just a position. It is not that, oh, who is the customer service for this business? No, we are not saying this, this a, a, a whole person, just one person being here and just answering questions. That's all. No. Customer service is the soul of the business. It is mm. the headquarters of everything. Everything revolves around it. Because why you would say you are a business owner is because you know customers will come. So what would make you, make you stand up from your bed, wake up this morning, dress up and come to work? It's because you know someone somewhere needs what you are going to be doing today, even if you don't have them as working customers. So my office is not, it's not every time that I have clients coming in, but someone is somewhere who is, who is going to be waiting on my proposal, my training slides, my live, like this Instagram live that we are doing. So if you are going to stand up every day to serve your customers, then you need to have a service mindset. The first thing yeah. we need to do is to reset our mindset. We need to stop um, seeing business as only a means to an end, and the mean like the all the end that a lot of people know is make money. Your, your business is offering a service, even if you are selling a product. Your business is offering a service. It is meeting a need. So you cannot deliver quality customer service if you think that give me money, I give you products, just go away. It's not going to work. It goes beyond that. Yeah, will. Okay always be poor customer service because you're like i i, I don't understand i like i've given you your your uh, maybe they, they've come to buy a bottle of water from you yeah, take, take your bottle of water and go away from me i'm, I'm done with you that's what you need from me no you will continue to have poor customer service culture within your business and even if you are going to be hiring a customer service representative you need to also work with people who has the kind of passion who understands this and so they are mm. not just coming into your business to simply be the front desk officer or the customer service representative, so to say. They need to know that they are the best guy, the go-to guy, the, the number one supporter, the backup, the backbone, anything you want to call it for your customers. And so they need to have that service mindset. And then we now move to having a relationship mindset. Because... It is not enough to even just serve and have transactions. You need to now have long-term relationships with your customers. Because, mm. like I said when I was introducing myself, you need to build business, uh, sustainable businesses. And for that, you need to have repeat customers. A business who understands the importance of repeat customers would be invested in delivering good customer service. That's it. If you meet a business owner or a customer service rep, who is so poor at it and they have this nonchalant attitude towards customers is because they do not understand. It is simple. If you understand the importance of customers, then you would invest everything that is needed for you to learn how to manage them very well. So that's the first thing I'm going to say because your personality impacts what you do. I can't serve joyfully if I don't understand that my role is impacting my customer. If I do not understand that whatever I do at my work today is going to affect your own day. If I go to a hospital and I meet the nurse who is at the front desk, how she receives me 
the manner of approach when I come in, it's going to prepare my mind to either expect that I will be treated well, the solution would come and I will get better, or I start panicking. I'm like, okay, this place actually, it's even, even looking summer. Am I sure I'm not going to add to the problem that brought me here in the first place? Sure. But if the nurse understands that, oh, everyone who passes through that door, they are counting on me to help them, to make them feel relaxed, to open up to whatever treatment they are coming to, then I will do my best. So you need to fix that mindset. It is business, yes. You want to make money, yes. But a business, the purpose is to serve, to meet the needs of your customers. And if you do not have that service mindset, you don't even have any business in customer service. If you are a business owner, you are automatically a customer service professional. If you are yes. interacting with customers yourself, and I tell business owners a lot of time, and they're like, yeah, I'm a business owner, I've been running this business for you know, 20 years, fine. But what about that customer service part? Being a food business does not automatically, can automatically make you a quality customer service professional. You need to learn that part too. So mm. you need to look out for that. But if you then have a team, when hiring, mindset is very important. Look out for that service mindset. If they don't have the service, no amount of training is going to help. I think we just need to put that out there. Because you introduce a customer service trainer to come and train. I, I know when I've been able, uh, I've been called to, to, to train staff and everything I'm saying is falling on their back it's because they don't even have any business being there. They don't understand the importance of customer service. They even feel like the CEO is wasting their time getting them in a customer service training. So there is no amount of training that will fix that. Is that you fire them or you engage them for coaching such that their mindset is forced to reset when they do that, then we need to go to training. I think I want to take a pause from there. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So you just mentioned now that one of the things we need to do is to change the mindset of the people involved exactly. in yeah. customer service yeah. directly. Exactly. We need to do a mindset. And that's some, something I do in uh, every of my training. We first of awesome. all look at what we call the customer service mindset. Uh, mm. We spend time, quality time at the beginning of the training to help the people understand what the customer service mindset you know, mm -hmm. is about and help them grasp that understanding and begin to, like you said, many of them, when you talk to them, the thing just falls on their back because uh, when they join in, the whole idea is I'm here to make money. But for you to make money as a business, you need to build relationships. Customers. To build relationships, to sustain the business, you mm -hmm. need to have the customer service mindset to be able mm -hmm. to retain the customer. So all of these things are related and it's fantastic okay. that you talked about that and uh, it's very key. It's very key. Customer, uh, customer service is, is beyond a profession. You say it's beyond a position, rather. It's a profession. It's a profession. And everyone is involved in it, from the business owner to the guy at the gate. Everybody is involved in it. It's very important. Yeah. You know, unfortunate part is that many businesses and business owners, you know, start business, get trained for what they do. They have the, they have the technical knowledge, but when they get into the field, they don't have any knowledge about customer service. They come with what they, the mindset they have, you know, in society and just come straight into business and assume that the mindset they have as individuals will work in business because they have the technical knowledge. Mm -hmm. Technical knowledge without knowledge of customer service is equal to average. Yes, exactly. Technical knowledge, competence, being good in your business, being know how to do it. Plus, customer service is where you get the jackpot. Mm -hmm. So customer service is very key for everyone key. in business. That's why Temi is here. That's why I'm here for business mm -hmm. owners that are listening, that will listen to this after now. If you have not taken time to talk to your people about customer service, then you are, you are leaving money on the, on the table. Because like she said, you know, you employ people from everywhere. You do your, your, your recruitment processes. Oh, yes, this guy is fantastic. He's qualified for the job. But what is his background? You know, what's his family background? How does he relate with people? Mm. You know, what, you know how, how, what is his built? We say people are a product of their nature and nurture. Mm -hmm. What is his nurture? Mm. Where is he coming from? What is his mindset? You okay. know, we have to be able to deconstruct the mindset he has and put in a proper mindset. Mm -hmm. You see, organizations that thrive in customer service, 
do well because they are taking time you know exactly. to you know work on their people train and retrain um customer service just like motivation or customer service training just like motivation is not a one off thing many people think that oh we trained last year on customer service so we don't yeah. need to train again no you know it's you if you bet yesterday you need to bet again today you need to bet again exactly. tomorrow mm -hmm. you need to cut your hair so that's how it is and you know customer service is a continuum it's not a one off thing you know what is what you do today that satisfies customers Maybe um, satisfy might not satisfy them tomorrow so you need to yeah. so i'm going to let Temi to come back and you know we've talked about two things now i got two things um you okay. may, first of all you must work on your mindset and okay. then you must also know that customer service is not a is not a position is a mm. profession what's okay. the third thing that business owners need to know go ahead oh, okay. oh before you come well, in before you come okay. in before you come in okay. to me, so I'll let you catch your breath a little more. Um, I'm going to be in Lagos. I didn't mention to you. I'm going to be in Lagos on the 30th of um, April, this April, you know, to teach businesses on how to grow. Yes, it's a Sunday. Wow. On how to okay. improve their customers. Yeah, the reason being that um, Sundays, I like Sundays for my training because pe people want their staff to be around. I don't want, I don't want to take money from them. I okay. want to help them okay. make money. So if I take them on weekdays and Saturdays, those are some of, for some businesses, those are the peak times of their jobs, of their business. Exactly. So yeah, I don't want to take money from them with the training. I want to help them make money. So mm -hmm. let's, let's leave you on the days you're working, the days you're okay. off. Let's do the training. And so Sunday works for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do Sunday training. So just to put that in. 30th of April, I'll be in Lagos to have that training. First, many people that will come, I'll be helping build this mindset that um, Temi has been talking about. We'll build the mindset and then we'll look at a lot of things on how to build, you know, um, a customer um, service structure for your organization. Many organizations do not have a structure. And when you don't have a structure, everything collapses. We mm -hmm. don't want, you know, your business to collapse. We don't want your customer service structure to collapse. That's why we're having this training. Uh, so, Everyone who is interested, who wants to take what we're talking about today further, can, you know, you know, inbox, message us, talk with us, and we can get this happen. Hopefully, Temi will be around on that day just to pop in and say hi. <laughs> There's many people that will be coming. Also, um, for those who, who, want, who want to train their staff, Temi mm -hmm. also is a very good trainer. I personally can beat my chest with my full chest. I recommend Temi mm -hmm. to anyone. Uh, who Thank needs you. training? If you can't get me, you can get to me. We're all in the same business together. Mm -hmm. uh, we can both as well deliver um, 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 the the required training that your organization needs. Exactly. All right, so Tami, I'll let you go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> all right. Um, so actually, I had mentioned one thing, but um, it's so fantastic that you can you you, you pick two out of them. So I, I got two points from it. From that, reset your mindset. So two for me is this. Develop a culture of excellence. In Nigeria of today, <clears throat> mediocrity has become the norm. Mm. I say it so often that when I raise my brows about you need the quality to, you of You need to service, say that again for the people okay. at the back so they can hear. Medi <laughs> mediocrity has become the norm. Mm. In Nigeria of mm. today, mediocrity has become the norm. Like everybody is just okay with 45%, 50%, or sometimes even 10%. When I raise my brows at the quality of the service I receive somewhere, I get attacked. You mm. know, people are like, you know, I to do, do manage it like that because we have watered down that excellent mm. spirit. Mm. So it's okay to not be served well. It's okay for a receptionist to do like this to you, to mumble money to you, for you to mm. ask them a question and they say, he's over there, go and look for it. And when you talk, the people are like, but she answered you now. We need to unlearn that. We need to. Sometimes customers don't complain to businesses because they know from experience that the businesses they, they complained to in the past, they were attacked. They were insulted. I have seen a business owner who almost beat up a customer just because he gave a feedback, he gave a piece of feedback. Hmm. So everybody seems to... <laughs> If you talk now, just there's nothing they would do. It's in normalize the culture. It's just normalize. So we, we, we've normalized that culture of mediocrity. The customer service rep knows this. He knows that even you as the manager, he knows that even you, you talk behind 
the customers. The customers. You insult customers when they are not. Mm. They know that you mm. yourself don't do all of these things. So they will bring that to their work. They will bring that to their interactions with customers. So we need to unlearn. I don't know where we picked it up from, but it has eaten so deep into our service industry. Almost yeah. everywhere now, you can see that. Yes, professionals like us, we are doing a very great job trying to help business owners to move away from this. But I just say there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. And I it agree. starts from within. I say that customer service is like charity. It starts from home, from you yourself. And that would have taken me back to my first um, point that says you need to have the mindset understanding why you are in business. Your personality impacts what you do. So that moves on to your culture of excellence. You need to know, okay, what is required? For my business, what does it even mean for your customer to be satisfied? Most businesses don't even know. What mm. are your customers looking for? What are the things that will matter to them? For you to have said, oh, I've scored well for a customer, what does it mean? Have you ever asked your customer? for that feedback have you ever asked mm. them to rate your customer experience have you ever asked yes. them what do you love it why do you keep coming or why do you even come in the first place what do you love about our service what can we improve we don't ask these questions anymore because we don't want to hear the truth and when we do hear the truth unsolicited we don't work on it we don't want something? to hear the truth we, we don't, don't want to hear the truth we don't want to hear the truth we are not ready for that, that conversation nobody mm. wants to break the table Nobody wants the table to be shaking. We want mm -hmm. it to stand on the one leg that it's on. Because if we, sh if we actually are shaking tables, a lot of things will change. Okay. You know, it's back to your conversation on, on, on normalizing poor um, customer, um, service. customer service delivery. We have normalized it. When there's no mm -hmm. lights for, for one day, when they bring it, we say, ah, thank God they brought thank it. God. We're supposed to have light for 24 hours. We, 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 they started reducing it gradually. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's the thing with customer service. It doesn't drop overnight. It starts dropping gradually. It drops a little, and when you don't complain, it comes down further. Exactly. When you normalize it, it goes down further. You know, I grew up in the time in Nigeria where we used to have light for at least, let me not exaggerate, at least 18 hours. It <laughs> went down to 16 hours. <laughs> It went Nine. down to somebody else would tell you 12 hours. hours. So, so now we've gotten to the point where we don't have it at all. They, and now please. not having it is normal. We are just. You either get inverter, solar, generator. Yes, everybody is normalizing that poor delivery culture. Well, let's not go in deep into that conversation. <laughs> let me let you go ahead. Because that's one, that's one big conversation that we may not leave. We indeed go into that, it. That table, we if we break it, like, we won't finish. So in your business, if you don't deliver customer, great customer service, when you go to another business, you too, you will overlook it mm. when they give you poor mm. customer service. That's why. If you get into a workplace and you don't like the quality of service given to you and you don't take active steps, you are not intentional about correct. It's because in your own business place too. A lot of these things are overlooked. I say it all of my mouth and with all of my mind. And I know why I'm saying it because that is the truth. I've seen it a lot of times. The things that it, sometimes it, some business owners, they, 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 can I say innocently? Okay, maybe innocently. There are some things that they just don't think is wrong. And we do not know. When I talk about tone of voice in communicating with customers, and say, but I mm. said sorry. I said, you said sorry. I think you said sorry. How did you say sorry? How did you say the sorry? So you're telling me, but I said sorry now. Even you, you yourself, you like it. Look, look at your attitude. When you're telling mm. me you apologize, you said, I said sorry now. What else does she want? I, now, compare that to, we are so, so, so sorry. Tell me, no, I, don't want, I, don't want, I don't want us to miss that. I want to jump in there quickly. Where oh, okay. the, 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 the staff says, I have said sorry now. Mm -hmm. And you, who is the customer service person who is saying, Assuming we're in a scenario and we're using that as a as a case study, okay. you are saying, look at your attitude, um, the way you said the story. Have you seen situations where it is not the person requesting, uh, the person who was hot now requesting for mm -hmm. that apology? The people around we say, ah, madam, but she has said sorry now. What Leave her alone. Want? 
what is yes do you want them to sack her you forget that is not even if they are not doing it to you directly what you are trying to normalize in that staff will affect you tomorrow they will do the same to you exactly and they might even do worse because yeah. they would have gotten away with that first one and they would have been emboldened that's because they will come and say well, i did this yesterday nothing happened so nothing well happened. Uh, uh, nothing will happen today mm -hmm. so it's very important when we see things like this because um I, I sent it i sent something out recently and i was saying that what do we need what like you like you asked earlier what is our what does customer service what does customer satisfaction mean to us okay. what would satisfaction mean to you as a staff what does satisfaction mean to all of us we need to begin to ask a corporate question and we need to all get involved. Trainings by me and you will not solve the customer service mm. problem in Nigeria. Entirely. Everybody mm -hmm. needs to speak up. Mm -hmm. Even when exactly. you are not directly involved, um, some other customer was affected. Exactly. Don't defend what is not right. Mm -hmm. When we all request, we, we, know, we, we make it seem... We make it look like the normal when we all request. But when I'm the only person requesting for you to do it right, and every other person is asking, it seems I'm the odd person. Exactly. No. Requesting for proper customer service is it's not, not odd. Please. Don't make anybody who is requesting for that look odd because you too need that quality customer service delivery so much to say about this but thanks so much i'm going to let to me land thanks so land. much thanks we're going to so finish much. this today <laughs> well we'll try we'll try our best we'll try our best today just like you said it's it's a corporate responsibility we all have to get True. involved we all have to get involved uh customer service is poor I, I i've gotten a lot of comments and, and i think i think i've seen some on your pages to comment of people who are saying eh, leave nigeria vendors would they ever hear would they ever change and in my mind i smile i'm like when you say nigeria vendors in one way you are one of those nigeria vendors exactly we we, we rush to say eh, vendors business owners but you yourself you are you don't have a business but you're an employee of an organization what do you do yeah what do How you do, you do that? Your own business? You are doing customer service too. It's not only for entrepreneurs. If you are an employee of an organization, you are delivering customer service because that organization has clients, has sure. people who take their services. So even if you are not interacting with them directly, your work gets manual. I say GM1 and GM, GM2. GM1 is the gates man. GM1 is the general manager. From, there, from one to two, we all have a role to play. And if we don't play it, then we are going to all just have to endure whatever it is that it's handed over to us. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to go to my last point. And I think we've touched on it a little. You need to embrace okay. training and development. Train I didn't say staff and development. training. That is yes. why I didn't say staff training. We have... Uh, we've monopolized training for customer service staff alone, and I don't know that. When I, in fact, when I'm going to be having staff training, I will require for the manager and the CEO to be there. Uh, and, and business we owner even, also. We will even have our own separate session so that because sometimes you are the weapon fashion against your customer service staff. <laughs> yeah, I know. True. I know. You, you have poor structure. You have wicked processes and policies in place. Mm. We don't do this. We don't do that. We don't do this. You are policing your customers all over the place. We don't do this. We don't do this. We don't do that. And that is what you tell your customer service staff to tell customers. Please, what do you want them to do? I don't understand. Okay. I go into Can't a business that the business owner says, uh, a customer says, okay, you don't do this, you don't do this. There is no, um, what's the word now? That we don't have any refund policy and you don't do this once you leave our premises you are gone you are this what would you, you want your customer service personnel to do when you say they can't that, do better you're than already what telling you've asked them, them that, to do exactly you're already telling them that we don't care about our customers much we just do whatever the bare minimum that we can and so they also transfer that to your customers True. so when i say embrace training and development and it has to be continuous just like you were saying it earlier it's not that oh we trained them last year now no 
it continues. When they learned about customer service principles this year, can they learn about communication? Sometimes communication is just the only difference. True. It's just the only difference between poor customer service and excellent customer service. Something happened to me this morning that I'm going to have to use as an example. So I heard that for something about a week ago, over a week ago, actually. And all I got was an email letting me know that that order has been dispatched. That company hasn't been in touch with me since then to know whether I've received my order or not. And then a week after, for an order that you told me will be delivered between three to five days after the day I ordered. That's seven days, I think eight days actually. Nobody is talking to me to know whether I've received it. And they've collected your money. And they've collected my money. So you don't have any as, business with me. That's broad daylight robbery. And the dispatch. Trader is calling me and telling me, where, where are you? And should I take it back to the office? That is happening. I mean, customer is already dissatisfied. I have already told myself, we, myself and my head and my mind and my spirit, we have already I had would never never go back that there. I'm never going back to that business. But you are not even communicating. So sometimes it's just communication that you need to fix in yes. your business. But then training would help you. And when, when we talk about training, training is not um, one size fits all. Don't just say, hey, no. come and train these people. Don't say, come and train these people. Identify the skill gaps. What do customers complain about? What have you yourself observed? What do you know that needs to be changed? What do they need to do better? Identify the gaps and train for that. Don't just say, hey, come and treat anybody. Go on, girls, come and come. They just come and treat them as a customer service. And it should be continued. It should be continued, rather. And also for the business owner. I said this earlier and we're going to say it again because it's very important. Don't say I'm a professional in my field and so I know customer service is just my staff that needs training. No. Even you need to understand what customer experience means and then how to deliver customer service because there's a difference, but let's not go into that. Customer experience and customer service, it's, it's that yes. is a big conversation. So you as a business owner need to be trained as well. Expose yourself to this. And then let me go to the a popular question we are always asking hey, what if we train them and they leave let me throw it mm. back to you what if, what you if don't we don't train, train them, them and they stay and they don't leave <laughs> so that whole customer service culture that they have that mindset that they have is what they will be using for your business and your business is the one that will be taking the lash for it your business is True. the one that customers will come to and they will like ah, 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 what's happening here is this a business place or something else i'm not coming again you are the one losing money True. so if Everybody, let us, let's imagine that every business owner in, in Nigeria says, we will all train our employees. That means that if an employee uh, resigns from, from a business to another business, that's a trained employee moving to another organization. Another one leaves another organization trained as well. We will be, what we'll be exchanging will be trained personnel, trained hands, exactly. trained employees, all of us. But because it is only a few people, that a few organizations, a few businesses that are investing in training their staff. So you, you are getting half baked. This one is getting full no, baked, and then we are no baked at all. No baked, <laughs> no baked anywhere. <laughs> so you will need to embrace it. It is very important. I, I, I had a, a client that I absolutely love. This woman, when we first met, she told me I have a, a budget for training every year, every year. Mm. There is a budget as we are making our budget and our planning for the year. There is a budget fixed for training for everybody. Yes. So we we'll work with you, we we'll work with our staff, we we'll every and you will see the benefits. And what else is it? We are only talking about customer service, impact sales, impact marketing. In every it impacts area the whole business. organization. What are you saying? You get it right with customer service. Customer service will help you to see what is wrong with your inventory management. Yeah. You will see what is yes. wrong with your processes. You will see sometimes it's even help with your HR. You will see that, okay, no, this person is not supposed to even be here. This person yeah. is not supposed to be here. This is not the person who should be at our front desk. It will touch everything. It's every area that you will have to change for customer service to yeah. So yes. first, you need to reset your mindset. Have a service Mindsets. mindset. That's the very yes. first point. You need it. It's, it's the foundation. It is why you would even be interested in serving customers excellently. It is why you would even want to know what does customer satisfaction mean to a customer after service mindset. Next, 
develop and nurture a culture of excellence. Culture Stop of excellence. Normalizing mediocrity. Stop saying people are doing over shasabi or they are doing wickedness just because they they are requesting to be served well as they Correctly. should. No. Let's not normalize poor customer service. It's wrong. And that's why some business owners cannot thrive even in other African countries, let alone globally. Because yeah. what they think is normal here in Nigeria, they get there and they see that, oh, they can't, they can't, they can't cope. That, they cultural can't, shock, that cultural shock will be just too much for them. They can't, they can't adjust because they've been used to mediocrity back at home. Please, let's fix it. True. And then the last thing, you need to embrace training and training development. And development. As a business owner and if you have employees you need to invest if you worry that it would leave sometimes that not sometimes all of the time that is actually holding you back training may be what will help them to even stay with you when they realize that you're committed to their own development and if you can you can have a policy that says okay when we invest in your training you can leave the business until a certain time for not for yeah true have that True. policy in Just place. to be able to pay so back uh, what so we spent on back. you for training. But don't risk on baked, Not like training them. said. No baked. No baked <laughs> employees. Don't let them destroy your business. You work so hard to build your business. You, you, you invested so True. much. Don't True. let customer service be the reason why you lose that business. That will be all. <laughs> customer service is the factor that decides whether your business dies Succeeds or it grows. Or wins. Exactly. And so if it is a factor that decides whether your business dies or grows, then you must pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Many have not known to pay attention to customer service. And that's why we must thank you, Temi Tokwe. T. Thank you for having me. Let me put that in. <laughs> that is fine. Temi T <laughs> for coming today to tell us the three yeah. steps that business owners need to take to improve their customer service exactly. in their businesses, especially if the businesses are in Nigeria. And uh, you, you did a recap just now. You first of all have to change your mindset, then build a culture of excellence in your organization, never normalize mm -hmm. um, poor culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you must you embrace training and development. And you mentioned that training is not one-off. Training is not one-off. It's yes, a continuum. It doesn't continuum. end. You know, it's not just train my staff. It's not staff training. It's training mm -hmm. for the organization. That training for will everybody. help build a culture and a system, you know, through which you deliver um, proper customer service. I'm talking about helping you build a culture and a system. I'll mention again that we have a training coming up in Lagos mm -hmm. on the... Somebody, let me read some comments. Noah Pride comes out and says, Oh, more when you listen to great minds, you get feel. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to me, it's a great mind. And that's why I brought her here oh, okay. to come and, you know, give us some, uh, like some vibe <laughs> this lunchtime. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people learned a lot. I saw some other comments. Yes. Okay. Um, Marvel Advice, she says, Stop normalizing mediocrity. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, never normalize mediocrity. Um, let me not go back too further. But um, thank you to everyone who joined. Thank you, Timmy, for coming. Thank I hope we've learned. Me. And I hope, yes, and I hope that those that are in Lagos um, that watch this now or after will join the training in Lagos on the 30th of April. Uh, if you're in other cities and you want us to come to your city, you want to see Timmy and myself mm -hmm. in whichever city you are in in Nigeria, let us know. And if you want to training, you heard what Timmy said, if you want training and development for your staff, you can hook up with Temi. Um, if Temi doesn't want you, then you can hook up with me. <laughs> but go to her first. Um, she can give you the best training. Like I said, I recommend her with my food chest. Thank you. Um, and also, um, if she's filled, she can't manage the crowd that is coming, then you can come to me. Also, um, we'll give you the best of customer service training. Thank you again, Temi, for joining. I hope Thank to have you, you on my podcast very soon. So oh, we'll have okay. a longer time. We have like one hour, you know, to talk oh, about okay. everything customer service. It's Fantastic. called the Customer Experience Podcast. We'll have time to talk. It's on, it's on um, Spotify, Anchor, and all the other places. But we'll have time to do that okay. some other time. My regards to your family. Thank you. And to you. everyone around you. you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. And thank you to me. everyone that has joined this afternoon. I hope your lunchtime yeah. was awesome with us. Yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Well Bye-bye. Right. Yeah, bye.